Hi, everybody, and welcome to G Suite for Healthcare Providers. My name is Nate Hoffman, and I'm happy to have you here for this tutorial today. If you like my stuff, please like and share. Also, if you're finding me on YouTube, feel free to join my Facebook group where we talk about using G Suite for uh, patient management, practice management, and electronic medical records. Okay, so today's topic I think is super important. It has to do with how to organize your data, right? So we know that we have to hold on to our patient files for a number of years after we've had the patient. And we also know, or after we even we've discharged the patient, and we also know that if we're ever audited by an insurance company, a lawyer, or, or all, if we have to turn in our documentation to a lawyer, um, heck, a state board, whatever it may be, you need to be able to retrieve those documents. You want to be able to do it easily. You want to be able to recognize the right patient, the right data, and easily um, print it out and get it sent off to wherever, wherever it needs to be or, or transmit it wherever it needs to be. So here is how I do it, right? Well, I'm going to pop up a um, this document right here is a fictitious patient, right? His name's Ant Anthony Hopkins. Um, yes, the actor, he was a patient. Oops, I broke HIPAA. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Um, anyway, this is what I do. Let's say his birth date was 12 24 1956. I always like to have the name followed by their birth date and then the type of note that I've produced for that day. So that way, when I'm looking through my files, I know ex everything that I need to do, I, I know everything to identify that note and that patient for that date of service. So I don't like if I'm if I'm over here, for example, and I type in uh, in my drive Anthony Hopkins, what's gonna pop up? Well I okay, this is another folder that I've already produced for him. But also here's the here is that specific document that I've produced. So I know everything that I really need to and I don't have to open up each and every individual document to know what's in there, right? I know that's an evaluation. I know which patient it is because I've got a birth date that corresponds to this person and then also an evaluation date, okay? Heck, if you wanted to go as far as to have, you know, specific, uh, like a, a patient identification number, heck, you could do that too. Whatever whatever works for you. It's, it's kind of up to you. Uh, anyway, that that's how I like to do it. Now let's say though this is the same Anthony Hopkins, I probably am going to want to name this folder appropriately as well so that I can identify 1956. Uh, so I can identify that this document corresponds with this individual, right? And if I open this up, all right, okay, I've got, I got that in there already. I actually dragged and dropped this previously. But, so the other, your other option also is, okay, well, let's say I want to have specific folders. You may not necessarily, if you're kind of annoyed that you have to write down their date of birth every time, if your folder has the right date of birth and you're just making sure that you're getting all of the right, uh, all the right documents into that folder, you probably don't necessarily need to have that on there. I, I like to have it on both so that you can kind of match them up. It just makes sense to me. So anyway, uh, that's kind of where I would steer you. But again, it's up to you. Um, and then I do, the other reason I also like them in folders is because of other organizational, thing, organizational things later on that I'm going to show you. One of them has to do with calendaring, right? So if I calendar a, a patient, and let's say, um, I'm going to go over this in another video, but maybe multiple providers need to see him, and they're going to fill out different types of notes. Well, I can have several, if in, in his folder, I can have several different types of forms that are available, and I can have a, in my, in my calendar, I can have a URL that takes my providers to their folder and then they can pick the correct form that they need to fill out. So if you're using your calendar as kind of your main patient management uh, like default screen that everyone's looking at and that's how they get to like their notes and the forms and things that they need to fill out, then it makes sense to have folders for each patient, okay? And so we'll go over a couple things uh, next time. We'll go. 
I'll kind of delve into that uh, concept a little bit more, as well as how do you get uh, like a form, let's say I want the same exact form to pop up in everybody's file, even though it's the same form, right? And that's pretty easy to do. I'll show you that in the next video. Anyway, I hope that this was worthwhile. I hope it, hope it made, made sense. Again, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out and let me know. Again, um, naming is important uh, and making sure that you just uh, that 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 you are consistent with it so that you have a method of finding it, the the data simply and easily um, one last thing actually I wanted to go through here I don't know if I mentioned I, I don't think I mentioned this to begin this but to begin with but this search option in your Google Drive is extremely robust so as I mentioned before uh, you don't necessarily have to have folders for everybody as long as you're naming your patients correctly, the search the the search option will take you to all the files that you need. Anyway, we'll talk to you later, guys, and have a good day.